To live in fear is an awful state, and it's not God's will for us, for He has not given us a spirit of fear. Hi, this is John Stemkowski, and it's so good to be back with you today to share the next in a series of what we've been calling Encouraging Words. And we felt like the Lord wanted us to share various pieces of truth with you that would hold you steady and firm through this entire season, which has been very unusual for all of us, brought upon, uh, upon us by the coronavirus. Whether you're in the United States or in some other part of the world, it certainly had an impact. And it seems that we're just about to turn a little corner here and there may be some changes where certain areas of our country and internationally are beginning to open up again. People are beginning to move about and uh, perhaps a little more freedom. But I was thinking about how would we approach that? How would we feel the first time we go out in public after so long a time? Will we feel comfortable? Will we be a little nervous, kind of afraid? Not quite sure, but how do we walk through life uh, without knowing and with lots of wonderment? And it's entirely possible that fear could grip us. Fear is a very powerful force. And I would like to share with you today a scripture in the book of 2 Timothy, which speaks to this idea of fear. And it goes like this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Let me say that again. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I want to unpack that scripture for you just a little bit. If God has not given us a spirit of fear, where does it come from? It comes from your enemy. It comes from your spiritual enemy, the devil, who attempts to fill our hearts and our minds with fear when God says, that's not my way for you. I haven't given you a spirit of fear. I have given you power, love, and a sound mind. So we are to, with the power, resist the enemy and say, I will not succumb to that fear. And love. How do we have the knowledge of the love? I would suggest to you that in order to understand even a little bit of how much God loves you, look at the cross of Jesus Christ. The cross of Christ was the most powerful love story ever told. When Jesus, who was blameless, on our behalf, took our sins upon him and nailed them to the cross, took the full penalty of them so that we could be free. Tell me about a greater love than that. In fact, the scriptures say in another place, greater love has no man than this, that he would lay down his life for his friends. And that's what Jesus did. So we can be very secure in the fact that God loves us. And with that love comes his power, his protection, and the absence from fear. In fact, the Bible also says that perfect love casts out all fear. There's no room for it because we recognize that we're secure in the love of Christ. What about that sound mind? You know, sometimes when we get cabin fever and we're cooped up and, and we're somewhat limited in our movements, we begin to wonder, am I going crazy? Well, it is God's desire for us to have a sound mind. What does that mean? Well, in part, out of Romans 12, we are told, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is true that the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, when we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to our hearts and when we read the Word of God, that those thoughts from God come into our minds and our hearts and they're transformative. And I would propose to you that as we begin to go out and move about, we don't need to be afraid. We should not be foolish. We should act with a certain amount of prudence and, and concern and caution and, you know, being aware of our surroundings. But to live in fear is an awful state. 
it's not our friend, and it's not God's will for us, for he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, overcoming power, love, overwhelming love and keeping love, and a sound mind. So I wanted to share those things with you today in sort of a preparation for what may be soon here our next step of reintegration. And we may find that our world might not be exactly the one that we left or uh, when we began to shelter in place just a few weeks or months ago. There'll be some changes, no doubt. But can we face them with confidence? Can we face them in the absence of fear, in the knowledge that God is with us, that his power is within us, that his love is keeping us, and that he gives us a sound mind of wisdom to know how to walk in different and challenging days? I think we can. In each of these videos, we like to play a song for you from the Celebrant Singers Library. And today, to go with this thought of God giving us power, love, and a sound mind, it causes us to be courageous, not to be foolish, but to be solidly courageous. And so the song we selected for today says, Be strong and take courage. Listen to these words. Let them wash over your heart. And let the Holy Spirit minister this truth to you today. Be strong and take courage. Take a listen.
powerful song. To know that the living God who lives within you by his spirit will be strong in you today. Let me pray with you. Let's come before the Father in thanksgiving and receptivity of the truth of this encouraging word. Let's pray. Father, I come to you today in the name of Jesus, and I thank you and praise you for your faithfulness to us. I thank you for the truth and the power of your word that says that you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Do that, Lord. We pray for that. Work that into the fabric of our being. And now, dear friend, I pray for you. As these days wear on and as we begin to reintegrate a little bit, may you be so aware of the power and presence of God, the love that God has for you, which includes his keeping power and a sound mind to give you wisdom on how to operate in these challenging days. Father, thank you for hearing our prayer. Thank you for these moments together when we can realize that you've given us not fear, not a fear-based life, but power, love, and a sound mind. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us today. It is such a pleasure to be able to share with you in this way during days when we can't get on our bus and come and see you in person. The best thing we can do is to share our hearts with you and point you toward pieces of truth that will encourage you and hold you solid during these days. And let me say, if there are others in your life that you think would benefit from the encouragement that these videos bring, be sure to pass them on to them, send it to them, and bring their attention to it so that they too can receive a blessing from it. It's been interesting to me the reach of these videos. They have, uh, of course, by the power of the internet, reached around the world, and we're getting comments from various places. I'd like to share a couple of those with you today. One of the most amazing places that we were able to minister back in 91 was the country of Albania. Albania had suffered under 45 years of the strongest communistic regime on earth. And there was essentially no church and no light of Christ. We were able to go in there on the very first day and share the gospel. Well, interestingly enough, through these videos, we got a comment from a gentleman who lives in Albania, who came to know Christ during those days. And I thought you'd enjoy hearing it. His name is Milto. And he says, hi, celebrants. It was in 91 when I met you for the first time in my life in my hometown of Duras. I remember Duras. It was one of the happiest times in my life. It was the very first time I heard publicly about Jesus and to see American citizens in our country after 45 years of a communist regime. From then on, I am one of you. I today am myself a Christian and a believer. Wow. Wow. And there was another lady who wrote to us, and she said, I'm really enjoying watching the weekly videos. With all that's going on during this time, we all need to know we can trust in the Lord to get us through. Keep them coming. Well, Carlene, we will. By God's grace, we will. We'll continue to bring these little teachings and music that supports the truths of God's word to encourage you through this time and God willing beyond. Again, thanks so very much for being with us and we look forward to seeing you next time. 